Good evening, dear participants. Um, welcome to the virtual postgraduate info week live talk. So I'm the mod moderator for this session. My name is Dr. Ho Ket Lee. Um, before we start, do allow me to announce the housekeeping rules for today. So uh, the first is that we have muted the microphone for all attendees. So this is to avoid that we have uh, any interruption uh, to the speaker's speech during the session. Um, second is that uh, if you have any uh, question that you would like to ask, please uh, use the Q&A panel, um, uh, which will be uh, recorded, and I will put your questions to the speaker. So lastly, uh, please note that this is the uh, this live uh, webinar will be recorded. So uh, if you would like to refer to what we have today, um, you can actually refer to it at a, a later time. So uh, next, I will give a brief introduction of the speakers today. So the first speaker is Ms. Divya Delila Clarence, uh, who is an esteemed alumna of our Master of Science in Molecular Medicine program. She joined the program in 2020 and graduated in, uh, with distinction. Her dedication and passion for research are evident. Uh, she successfully published her research work in 2022. Our second speaker is Mr. Ashraf Hakim Zulkarnain bin Asman, who is another accomplished alumnus of our Master of Science in Molecular Medicine program. Um, despite being a part-time uh, postgraduate student, due to his commitment as a medical uh, lab scientist, he joined the, the program in 2018 and showcased remarkable perseverance. With over six years of experience in the medical field, he completed the entire MMM program and proudly attended the convocation in 2022. So our last uh, speaker will be our dear Dr. Liu Yun Kun, who is also fondly known as Dr. Louis. He has been associated with IMU since 2014 and has been serving as the program director for MMM since 2021. His dedication to the program has been instrumental in the smooth graduation of over 30 MMM postgraduates. Dr. Lewis has also personally supervised two MMM postgraduates, guiding them to successful completion of their research project. So those will be um, a brief uh, introduction of our three speakers today. So without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Divya to share her experience about the MMM program. So now I will pass to uh, Ms. Divya. Hi, thank you, Dr. Ho. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, let me know if you guys can see it, yeah. All right, um, so hi everyone, good evening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ho and Dr. Lewis for um, giving me the opportunity to speak at today's um, Virtual Postgraduate Info Week. Uh, my name is Diva Delilah Clarence and I am an alumni of um, uh, IMU. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about my journey during my master's in molecular medicine. So um, I began my MMM in 2020. So during this year, I think as all of us can remember, we were actually, um, it was just the beginning of the pandemic at that point. And I had just um, enrolled in MMM. So I was actually quite excited already, but it was an interesting journey, I would say, um, during my period uh, of master's. Um, and I'm glad to be able to share it with you guys. So a little bit of my background before I joined uh, the master's program is that I did my BSc of science, uh, double majoring in medicinal chemistry and biotechnology. So initially I started off um, doing a single major, major in biomedical science, but uh, over time uh, I realized that I did have a little bit more fondness for chemistry and um, a, a little bit more on R&D and, and, and that field. So I opted for that. Yeah, so um, as you all know, the MMM is a mixture of a, a thought and research as well. So quite a huge part of my uh, MMM was research. And I did majority of the work at the IMU lab. 
So initially, it was a bit difficult um, because of the pandemic. So there were a lot of rules and a lot of regulations that we had to abide with. Um, but I, I can only say that a lot of my supervisors actually really helped me out to make sure that I had enough time in um, IMU to ensure that all my research was being held uh, at the appropriate timings. So that was a really plus point, although it was not, it was a very unprecedented time for all of us at that point. Um, there was also a lot of collaborative work as well. So for example, one of my research um, required collaboration with University of Malaya, and I will speak about University of Technology Sydney shortly as well. Um, so these are just uh, some of the pictures of me in the lab, and, um, and, and that's one of my supervisors as well. I'll also be talking about him shortly. Uh, just a little bit of idea on, on what the environment was like in, uh, in uh, IMU. Very conducive, very nice, safe, clean space um, that always made me look forward to going to the lab all the time. So these are my supervisors um, that I worked really closely with throughout the, my journey in MMM. Um, of course, we had a lot of uh, thought, uh, thought subjects as well, which all the supervisors, I can't, I can't um, list all of them because there's so many of them who always guided me to whatever the queries I had. Um, but I would also like to highly um, recognize my research supervisors that really gave me a lot of guidance um, during this whole master's process as well. So I have uh, Dr. Dinesh Kumar Chalpan, Dr. Tiagarajan, and also Dr. Kamal Dua. So Dr. Kamal is actually one of the supervisors from uh, University of Technology, Sydney. So during my time, uh, during my master's, I was actually given the opportunity to have um, collaborative work as well with University of Technology, Sydney, which was, which was quite an interesting process because um, it was during the pandemic, so traveling was a bit of a difficulty. So there was a lot of uncertainty in the beginning, and um, but I was really, really keen and excited actually to, to have this experience of um, this collaboration with UTS. So on the left-hand side is a picture I took um, when, I, when I actually got there, and on the right-hand side is like a you know, Google photo, so you guys can see the big picture of just one section of the uni actually, it's, it's quite huge. Yeah, so as I was saying earlier, so um, I did end up going to UTS as well. So this is my supervisor there, as I was saying, Dr. Kamal. He was extremely helpful and very warm and helped me get um, a, a customized to everything that I needed. Um, he showed me around to the labs and uh, also um, I had some research teammates who really, really assisted me during my time there because I went there pretty much on my own. Um, so it was a bit, not, not to say a bit of a culture shock. I mean, we're doing the same work in the lab and whatnot, but, you know, just with the instruments and the do's and the don'ts and just uh, assimilating myself um, in the environment for a couple of, I think about a month plus, yeah. Yeah, so this is just um, some of the pictures of the UTS laboratory. Um, well, kind of similar, I mean, if you look at it to IMU's laboratory as well, so it's very clean. Uh, very well lit, and um, I know my table looks a bit messy here, but it was because I was doing some work there. Um, yeah, but but generally it was a really really good experience as well. I think um, it really opened my eyes to what kind of experiences that are similar and different um, here locally and also overseas, uh, and and it really gave me a lot of insight to that. Um, during my time. Um, during my time doing my master's in molecular medicine, um, my supervisors also did urge me and push me to actually write a review article. So this review article was quite a challenge in the beginning because um, the aim of, of getting an article published was always a dream of mine. However, it always seemed a bit of like a far-fetched dream. Um, so when, when it was suggested by my supervisors, I was like, okay, I will try my best, but I, I really did not have the confidence that it could actually be achieved. So uh, initially, it was it was a long process, I would say, in the beginning, because, you know, a review article, you, you require many, many um, references and a lot of uh, reading and writing up that, that you need to do on top of doing the research that you are already doing. 
So it was it was about balancing, you know, what I had on my plate. And at that point, I was actually also working. I was initially working full time, and then I switched to part time. And then when I went over to Australia, I quit my job because I had to go, and I wanted to go. Um, so it was juggling that work, writing the review article, and I was also giving a bit of tuition. So it was quite quite a handful at that point. But um, slowly, uh, I took it slow and steady. And I actually did manage to complete my review article. Um, it did get published in Nutrients, um, the, the journal. And um, I'm quite proud of it because it's like my first article. And um, yeah, so this is my first article. However, this was not part of my thesis. So this was actually just an additional paper that, um, you know, I my, my supervisor thought would be a good way to put my name out there, put, put my name you know, present in the publishing community as well. And I think it was a really good art article as well because it did have some relevance to the research that I was doing. So I was working on nanoparticles as well. Um, and we were working with uh, functional food, so specifically zero bone. So it was about looking at the how well the zero bone would work in the nanoparticle and targeting, you know, lung diseases and whatnot. So lung diseases and other chronic respiratory diseases uh, were part of my review article um, to give it a thorough understanding as well. So it did have a significant correlation to what I was doing um, in my research. Um, soon, this is my soon to be published research article, but it's already been published uh, as I speak now. When I was writing the slides, it was not published yet. So this is part of my uh, thesis work. So the research that I did conduct in IMU and also the collaborative work that I did do in UTS. So it is um, been put together in this article. So my teammates that I showed you earlier, um, those are that I forgot to mention their names, Bikash especially. So he carried out further studies on the um, nanoparticles and the cell lines as well um, because I was not able to stay there for too long a period so he did continue the studies on the cell lines and we put together a research paper that um, explains all of the findings that we did that we achieved yeah so this is me during graduation last year I am very proud and happy to say that I actually managed to get a distinction, something that I also thought would not be very feasible for me, but um, I guess with all the hard work and all the guidance that I was able to get, um, it, it, it brought me to where I am today. Um, just a little bit of insight because I don't even have a slide about what I'm doing now. So just a little bit of um, insight to what I'm doing currently is that I'm actually working in a healthcare consultancy. So right now I work in a regional office. So it's in Malaysia. However, it's an APEC office. So I, I do travel quite a bit to our neighboring countries. So we do have a lot of different types of projects related to infection prevention controls. Um, we even work with hospitals as well uh, on both their a little bit on the clinical side as well as um, IPC side as well, and even sometimes even the managerial side also. So um, it has a collaboration of the medical background, the scientific background, and a little bit of engineering background um, that is being put together to provide a consultancy service to a lot of the healthcare um, organizations in Malaysia and around the APEC region as well. So that's just a little bit of um, about myself. And um, I think lastly, I'd like to say for, for what I what I hope to be in my future, um, I am I am, of course, you know, still con not considering. I would actually really like to do my PhD soon or, or in the near future. Um, and I'll be really delighted if that opportunity comes my way. So just looking out for that and and yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um I hope you guys got something out of my little sharing. Um, if there are any questions, um, do let me know. Thank you guys so much. All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Miss Divya. So that is a, a very nice sharing of your experience here as well as abroad during the, uh, the project. 
So uh, I don't see any questions right now. So maybe uh, the participants will ask some questions and we will handle all the questions um, in the end uh, after all the speakers have gave their speech. So I think uh, now we can uh, invite our second speaker who is Mr. Ashraf to share his experience during the, his journey in MMM. So uh, let's welcome Mr. Ashraf. Thank you very much, Dr. Ho Lee. Uh, let me share my slide first. Right. Uh, very good evening to every one of you. And I am very pleased to meet all of you tonight. And first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to Dr. Louis and Dr. Ho Lee for inviting me to the sharing session tonight. And I'm truly humbled by the, by the invitation. And I'm more than happy to share my journey to, to all of the audiences. Okay, and I hope uh, what I'll be sharing tonight uh, will inspire you to for your future endeavor, right? So my name is Ashraf to begin with, and I am the assistant manager and as well as a senior medical lab scientist in Premier Integrated Labs based in uh, Pantai Hospital Kuala Lumpur. So uh, Premier Integrated Labs, formerly known as Pantai Premier Pathology, uh, I... I assume some of you, some of the students, some of IMU students uh, are familiar with the letter name because we, we just recently launched our new name in June. So um, I today I actually officially have 10 years working experience with Premier Integrated Labs. So, uh, and I graduated from Monash University for my bachelor degree. And for my master's degree, I, Last year, I graduated, I graduated from IMU in molecular medicine. So I am also a fellow uh, in Malaysian, of, Malaysian Institute of Medical Lab Sciences and also a registered medical laboratory scientist uh, under Malaysia Allied Health Profession Council. Right. Um, so uh, my interest in molecular actually began when uh, I was in my tertiary education. So basically, I started off with uh, Monash University Foundation Year or MAFI. And then I proceeded with the Bachelor of Science, Medical Bioscience program. Um, at the time, throughout the courses, there were a lot of uh, subjects that actually fueled my passion. And they were medical microbiology. They were actually, there, there are quite a number of um, subjects that really fueled my passion, like I said. Uh, and it was really a start of my interest in molecular. So uh, even my final year project, my scope of study is in microbiology. I did a research, uh, basically it involved culturing and anthropogenic bacteria called Campylobacter. So uh, in short, my bachelor degree, it's provided me with the, with the knowledge and uh, principles and experience that little did I know, uh, it would be a valuable uh, input for me at a later stage of my life. Okay, there's, and then in the same slide, there's a photo of me uh, and my parents on my convocation day. And here are some of my photos during my university years. Uh, as you can see, there are also the same photo which Divya shared just now. It's a photo of Monash University. And there's a photo of me holding a flower during my, uh, on my convocation day. And there's also a photo of me dissecting a frog in one of my lab sessions. And on the right side of the screen is, uh, uh, that's me when I visited the Monash Clayton campus in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, that was during my final year of study. Right, so uh, I joined Premier Integrated Labs uh, in 2013, basically uh, exactly one month after my convocation. Yeah, fortunately, I, uh, I got the offer to join them and also, I was recruited for the cytogenetics and molecular lab at the time, because um, at that point of time, they were starting up a, a molecular lab at their branch in Ampang, and they are looking for a candidate that have the basic knowledge on molecular. So we actually begin with only two staff for the molecular lab. The photo on the left top is actually a photo of my team one year after we started the lab. Okay, so uh, the lab grew and I, I, give, I was given the opportunity to attend trainings 
and conferences uh, overseas and also within Malaysia. And the following years, you can see the team has grown so much from two staff, we grew to eight staff and now we have almost 30. And in the picture, there these are actually only half of us uh, in the picture uh, during Pink October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Okay. So, um, of course, the team grows, the lab expand, and uh, as well as the responsibility. Uh, we begin to adopt many new technologies for molecular diagnostic uh, to a point where premium integrated labs were very much well known for our uh, pioneering uh, effort in advanced molecular testing, especially in oncology and uh, genetics. In 2018, uh, I, had the, I decided to further my study in um, further my study, uh, further my study, and I chose IMU, uh, Master of Science and Molecular Medicine. Uh, it was a coursework and research. Uh, it was a mixed mode coursework and research, and I did part-time, uh, I did a study part-time, part right? So um, I managed to complete the coursework in 2018 and 2019, but when I about to start my research project, the pandemic hit. So I had to hold my project for about one year and a half. And then um, in 2001, in almost half, June 2021, I started my research project and I managed to complete the Viva and graduate in 2022. At the time, I was the person in charge for molecular infectious disease lab uh, at my workplace. So due to work commitment, um, like I said, I had to put on hold my study. And as you can see in the pictures, there are photos of boxes, stacks on top of each other. And inside of those boxes are COVID-19 samples that we have to deal on a daily basis, which uh, I think there are about almost close to 5,000 per day. And then there's also a photo of me uh, unintentionally dosed off at my workplace because at that time I was waiting uh, for my analyzer to complete. Um, just to share with you, uh, I did my research uh, at my workplace. So it was, it was very convenient for me as a working adult. So because um, I can do the research together while I was working. So despite the rough few years uh, during the pandemic, 2022 is an extra blessed year for me because uh, I managed to graduate and complete my master's degree. And then uh, I was promoted. And also I had my third bundle of joy on last October. Um, right, so this is my MIMLS and MAHPC certificate. Uh, so MIMLS is Malaysian Institute of Medical Laboratory Sciences, uh, and MAHPC is the Malaysian Allied Health Professions Council. Right, so that's my a bit of my journey as a medical lab scientist. Uh, basically, I have to juggle between work, study, and life. And looking back, it was an undoubtedly very challenging years, but I regret nothing because uh, I choose to be resilient to chase my passion. And I would like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Uh, Prof. Azizi Ayub at the time for the guidance and all the advices that he gave me. And then um, la yeah, last but not least is uh, the postgraduate study not only provide me with experience, the knowledge and uh, boosted my career and upgrade my position, but it also teaches me resilience, patience, and uh, strengthen my inner self. That is all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ashraf. So that is also a very uh, inspiring journey, okay, uh, especially when you were in the industry doing all the diagnostic work hit by uh, COVID left and right during that time. I think all of us remember that period of time. So uh, now, should we, uh, uh, before I invite Dr. Lewis to start his talk, I would like to remind everybody that if you have any question that you would like to ask any of the uh, three speakers that we have today, um, do put your questions in the Q&A panel, which is on the top. All right. 
So we will uh, uh, go through those questions and divert those questions to the speakers later. So don't be shy in uh, um, posting your questions. All right, so uh, now I will invite Dr. Lewis to uh, give his speech. Okay, thank, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Hoket Lee. So, so hold on. So uh, uh, good evening to everyone and thank you for Divya and also Ashraf to share your uh, journey to our participant here who uh, have uh, interest in this uh, master program. Okay. And also thank you to the participant to spend your uh, your your time during this period to attend this uh, one hour webinar. So uh I'm the uh, program director for this uh, MMM program. I call it as MMM, okay? So let me continue uh, the slide here. Hold on. So I will. So for this MMM program, actually we have two more, conventional and also the uh, open distance learning as showing here, okay? So I will go through this uh, uh, in the following slide, okay? So, this is our uh, my briefing outline about this uh, MM program. I will introduce you about uh, what is the conventional and ODL mod for this program. And this program also will, will have the full-time and part-time for, for the postgrad who interest to join this MMM. Okay. And I also will share with you the semester activity and also some of the leases and uh, the history for this MM program. And the last one will about the, the basic fee structure that I can share, share with you, okay? So for this MM program, the total credit hour is 40 credit hour. Once we complete uh, at least 40 credit hour, that means we already complete the whole program. That means we can go through the convoc convocation already. So in this program, because it's a mixed mod, it's not master by leases, it's a mixed mod, master mixed mod. That means you also will learn some of the uh, the theory, the, the new updated knowledge. And also, we also will provide some uh, training in the skill-based learning okay, in certain module, okay, especially during the research project module, where you can learn more, most of the, uh, the skill-based learning activity. And in this uh, MM program, we have the core module as well as we have some selective module. In this whole program, we only need to select uh, two selective module, okay? We need to select two selective module and with the core module together. Then we can, we can achieve the uh, total credit hour is 40 credit hour. So because mixed mod, therefore, most of the assessment is based on our coursework. It, it is different like uh, the study that you go through during undergrad. So undergrad, Every semester, we will have the end of semester examination for each of the module. But for this uh, master program, because it's for, for different level, so how we assess the competency for each of the learner is based on the coursework. So our coursework will based on the case study report. So the, the postgrad need to think uh, uh, how, how to solve that case study and as as uh as highlighted by the each of the module, and we also will let the uh postgrad to present their 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 uh their case study report as well. Okay, so in conclusion, we don't have the examination for each of the module, but for research project, yes, we have the examination. Our research project examination is Viva. Okay. So after we complete the research project, we will go through the VIVA where we will have the uh, external examiner and internal examiner to go through the VIVA together with you. So we will go to the next slide. So as I mentioned, for this M program, they have two mods. One is conventional, another is ODL. We can join this program either is ODL or conventional. What the difference is for conventional, usually, we need to attend the class in, in IMU campus during the weekend. Uh, but during last few years, last three years, uh, most of the country is attacked by the uh, outbreak, the pandemic. So our conventional face-to-face -face, uh, class will be carried out 
as a synchronous. That means like, for example, at 30, we got the class. So the all the postgrad need to join the, the, the class through online. Okay, So that is meaning synchronous. The difference with ODL is the ODL postgrad is they not need to attend the class on that time. Like at 30 got class, they not need to attend, but they can attend all the learning materia that already been uh, uploaded in the ODL platform based on their convenient time. Okay, So they can uh, go through the learning activity based on their own time because some of the adult worker, they also have uh, duty during weekend, even though our class schedule in weekend, but some of the adult worker, they will have duty in their own company. So they are unable to attend the face-to-face the -face class or synchronous lecture. They are unable to attend. Hence, they will select as the ODL mod. Okay. So how about the discussion activity and presentation for the ODL uh, MMM postgrad? They will do this through the uh, online platform. So their discussion will not in live. But for the MMM conventional, the discussion will be on as the live. Like now, we have the question, I highlight the case study, then we have discussed together at the same time like this. So the presentation for conventional also will be present like what I'm doing now, like present as a live. But for ODL MMM postgrad, their presentation is they record their own presentation and then they will upload in the ODL platform link. So the examiner will try to uh, do the evaluation and then give the feedback for their presentation. For the Viva, even though you join as an ODL or conventional, the Viva will be synchronous, online synchronous. You need to attend the Viva as live. Okay. For the conventional, the Viva also is a live. Uh, like if no no outbreak already, usually the Viva will carry out in the IMU campus. Okay. For the research project, as uh as mentioned by the speaker just now, our our alumni, alumni some of the research project can be carried out not only in IMU. You can carry out in your own uh, country or on your on at your own uh working place, provided that you have that instrument to 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 do the research activity or provided that you have the course supervisor at your site as well. <clears throat> Usually, most of our students carry out the research project is in IMU campus, yeah, okay, majority. Same to the ODL, they also can carry out the research project. Some ODL postgrad actually is from, uh, from uh, overseas, let's say from, from uh, Africa or from, uh, from Australia, so they are unable to come to Malaysia. So they will do their research project at their own country in their institute, provided they have the course supervisor in that institute or in that research lab. Or they can carry out the research project is the in silicon research project or the systematic review research project. So they not need to come to IMU campus. And other than that, for this MM program, we not only can choose ODL platform or conventional platform, we also can select it as full-time or part-time. The difference for full-time and part-time is for full-time, we, uh, we need to complete this program within one year. Okay, within one year. If something happened to your, uh, during your study duration, then we can still extend it to another one year. So that means one to two years. Okay. Majority is can complete within one year until they go through the VIVA or submit the thesis one year. <clears throat> For the part-time, the part-time MMM postgrad will have minimum is two year. And for this MMM part-time postgrad, they also can have another four year. In other words, that means the part-time MMM postgrad will have the study duration is two to six year. Okay. But in, in our profile, we don't have any student or any postgrad complete whole, whole study up to six years. No, none, none. Okay. So far, don't have. Yeah. Okay. So in summary, this MMM pro program, we can decide to join it as the conventional or ODL. Okay. So depend on your, uh, depend on your need. 
on your on your situation. For example, I am the I am the candidate who interest in uh, uh, molecular medicine, and I think that I am also the adult worker, and I usually I have uh the schedule need to deal with my company during the weekend and weekday. So I will select as the ODL. And then I also will consider whether got new project aside to me for my company or not sometime. If yes, then I have heavy workload. I think I, I unable to I unable to join it as full time. Then I will I will choose this MMM ODL part time. Okay. However, we also have some candidate who interest in uh, molecule medicine is a fresh graduate. Okay. They think they want to have the master degree and then they plan after they be in one year, they complete the master. They would like to apply the PhD in other country or in other institute. Then they can select MMM, either ODL or conventional, based on their interest. If they think they like conventional, they like to come to the campus, they like to attend the class as live, they're more focused, then they can select as conventional. And because they are fast grad, they don't have any uh any heavy duty. In, in 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 their work road, then they can select as a full time because they can complete complete this MMM program within one year up until they submit the thesis and viva within one year. Okay, if they think that they they want to take the this MMM program, don't want to too rush, they want to step by step, then they can choose it as a part time. Okay, or they sometime of sometime the the MMM postgrad. They maybe have the financial uh, financial burden, then then they don't want to spend too much of the 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 fee within one semester. Then they also can select part time because the fee is based on the module that they select. So therefore, they can complete this M program as a part time and conventional within two year, minimum two year. So maximum can up to six year. So that is a uh, in summary. So now I will bring you to the uh, learning activity for each semester. This is the math semester. This module right, will not offer every semester. They only will offer for math semester. For example, molecular medicine only will open during math semester. Now it's already July. Let's say after this uh, uh, webinar, then you, you, you will think about it, whether you still interest in this program or not. Let's say you yes, then you will join this program during September. So if September, this is the core module will be offered to you. Uh, molecule basic of disease two, bioinformatics, and research methodology and scientific writing. So you need to take all of these three core module. Core module is meaning compulsory module. At the same time, you also can select the selective module. So the, the during September semester, this is a selective module we'll offer to you. But bear in mind, selective module uh, will only offer when the minimum student number have been registered to this selective module. Let's say lab management. Only one uh, MMM postgrad registered to this, then this selective module will not be on, cannot be on. Minimum must be have two, two, two MMM postgrad registered on this selective module. But for core module, definitely will will on every time during the September semester. Okay. So, so from this selective module, you can select one or two. Yeah. Because the whole program, you only need to select two selective module. If let's say you don't have any interest for this selective module during September, then until next year, you already register this program. Next year, uh, you already complete the September semester. And then must semester, that means next year, will be your second semester. Then this is the selective module will be offered, offered during mass semester. Then you can select this selective module during mass semester. And this is a core module that you need to tap during the March semester. However, the research methodology and scientific writing, you not need to tap already because you already register it during September semester. So this is the uh the the module offer in different semester. So I haven't informed you about the research project module. Okay. So now I will tell you about the research project module. So if let's say you select this MMM program, MM program, either ODL or conventional as a full time, 
your study duration is one year, as I mentioned just now, minimum one year. So during your first semester, let's say September, you need to take all the core module, including the research methodology and scientific writing, this one. Okay. You need to pass this. You need, you cannot fail this module. Huh? Okay. So during this first semester, you already start to uh to 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 be uh assigned to the uh main supervisor. You you will be provided with the research project already. You need to figure out the research project already during the first semester, because you need to submit the proposal for vetting during first semester. So when the 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 MUJC committee already approve your research project, then during next semester, that means March semester next year March. So you will start the research project module. You start register this module. Okay. And then you can start carry out your research project during March 2024. For full-time MMM postgrad, your research project duration is five months, including the thesis submission. Only have five months. For the part-time, or the part-time MMM postgrad, either ODL or conventional, you can start your research project during your semester three. That means, for example, uh, you register this MMM uh, program during this year, September. And then your next semester is next year, March. Then only you start your research project next year, September. Okay. So for, 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 for MMM part-time, the, the research project duration is 10 months, approximately 10 months. So you have more longer uh, research project duration for you to complete the research activity. Okay. So definitely you need to start to uh to identify the main supervisor and research project. Okay. You need to, to build out the research proposal and then submit for MJC for, for approval. Then you can start the research project during the semester three. Okay. So this is the uh the timeline or, or the, 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 the workflow for full-time and part-time. About our researcher in IMU, we have many researchers. Uh, I just highlighted some of them who is actively involved in our MMM program for research activity. We, we have uh, Dr. Getty just now, uh, the, the person who introduced us. Okay, we, we have uh, Dr. Dinesh, who is very active in research and have high publication. Okay, and we also have Dr. Uh, Lun Yan and Dr. Haswani, who is, uh, is an expert in the genetic. And this uh, Dr. Vasu is expert in the computation for drug discovery. Okay, and also we have the uh, data science expert, uh, Dr. Uh, Tan Isyon and some cancer research. And Dr. Hockett Lee also is a, uh, is a expert in the cancer research as, as well. Okay. And we have the, uh, uh, the, the researcher who, who, who is uh, also is our dean for the postgrad as well, who is involved in the research activity as well. Okay. So this is the news that I try to uh, capture, to share, uh, to share, to some of the candidates here, in case you are not from IMU. For those who are from IMU, you will know about this news uh, during uh, last few years. We, some of our IMU researchers also have been listed as the top 2% scientists uh, in their main uh, subfield discipline. Okay? And recently, that means 2021, a few years back, our IMU also have successfully secured some of the external grant from the MERC with this amount during uh, 2021. Okay. Not only that, uh, uh, Prof. Wong Siu Wong Feng, also one of our researchers who, who actively involved in our MM program as well. Okay. And, 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 and she, she also highlighted that one of our uh, IMU researchers also successfully secured one of the uh, external grant with this amount during uh, 2022, okay? And same to Dr. Yilin Chang, who is uh, active in the cancer, also involved in the diabetic, also successfully secure some external grant uh, during uh, previous year, okay? And this is also the, 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 
the detail about the uh, national grant FRGS our, provided by Malaysia that successfully secured by our IMU uh, researcher okay, with the different research project title as listed here and the, the budget is have been approved by the FRGS. So this project already ongoing. Yeah. And recently, this year, our IMU also have been successfully have the uh, new uh, research activity or research project that related to the diabetic as well. Okay. You can try to Google this and you can get more information about this. Yeah. So this is a history about our MMM program. So far, uh, based on my database, we have 59 MMM alumni. That means this 59 MMM postgrad already convoked, okay? Go to the convocation already. So from this uh, pie chart, you can realize that uh, majority, I mean, up until convocation, actually they complete their study up until the TC submission and Viva is within one year, okay? One year, but they need to wait for convo maybe near to two years already, two years, okay? And we also have small portion of the MMM uh, postgrad successfully to complete everything within one year. Okay. And then we also have 7% who is complete this MMM program actually within five years up until convocation with 7%. So majority is within two years. Yeah. Maybe some of them is the part-time as well. Okay. So where, where, where are they come from for this MMM alumni? Just now 59, total 59, majority, 43 of them is come from Malaysia. And with some of them is come from Indonesia. We also have come from uh, Singapore. So far, I, I remember it's one only. And uh, we come from the Africa or, or some uh, Saudi Arabia country or Middle East country and also the India, okay? We uh, so far we don't have come from the America, no. Okay. And here is the fee structure for for uh for our MM program. This is a application registration fee where you can get it from online. You can later you can Google and then check from online. All this detail already highlighted in the online. So this is for Malaysia and, and international. For 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 today, uh, for this few weeks, if you register, they have 800 thinking in Malaysia is, is worth, okay? So this is a fee. The fee is based on the, uh, the module. Some module is three credit hour, two credit hour. So each credit hour is 1,000. If two credit hour, you need, we need to pay the fee is 2,000, okay? For the module fee. This is a for conventional. So the, the core Core module and selective module total credit hour is 20. Depend on how many module you select during that semester. Our research project module, the total credit hour is 20. Okay. And then uh, for ODL, the fee structure will a bit different. So it's 800 linked Malaysia uh, per credit hour. So total also 40 credit hour. Okay. Yeah. We also have the, the double award uh, degree as well, but the, the price is, uh, the fee is based on uh, the, the, land, the pound, okay? So this is an international, for international student, the fee structure is as listed here, okay? All this can be get from the uh, online as well. The fee structure is a bit different compared with the Malaysian student, but for the ODL, it's still same. For, for the cost, the, for the module that is not related to a research project, is still same. With research project also same, yeah. So that's all about uh, my briefing on this MMM program. And this is a few of our uh, MMM alumni. So today you have uh, seen our Mr. As Asraf and also Ms. Divya who come to try to share uh, where they form and also where are they now after graduate, where are they now, okay? They also share with you. We also have other uh, MM alumni 
as showing here, we have a lot for um, more than this. But all of this is who have read their news in, in our program. You can accept the, the news that wrote by them in our MMM uh, online website. So you can, if you have time, you can read about their, 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 their sharing of their experience in the research activity and in this program as well. Okay. So I think uh, that's all for me. So thank you very much. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lewis, for those uh, interesting slides. So uh, again, a reminder, if you have any questions that you would like to ask uh, any of our speakers today, um, do uh, type your questions in the Q&A panel. Uh, we will um, divert the questions to the respective speakers. So uh, the first questions over here, uh, the, particip the participants would like to know the native place of the speakers who are sharing their story. I think uh, actually the, uh, the speakers have uh, already uh, described uh, where they are from, uh, but maybe the participant missed it or uh, joined uh, late. So maybe uh, Ms. Divya and uh, Mr. Ashraf can uh, briefly go through where you are from again, and then followed by Dr. Luis, the participant will also know uh, which department you are from in IMU. Maybe we can start from uh, Ms. Divya. Hi. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, the question is asking the, my native place, um, meaning my background or, or, or where I'm from? Um, probably your background. Okay. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm also not very sure. All right, I, I'll Maybe just give them the both then. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually from Malaysia um, and I did my undergraduate at Monash University, Malaysia and uh, in my, I did my bachelor in medicinal chemistry and biotechnology, so a double major, and then I did my master's at IMU. Yeah, so I'm Malaysian. Okay, right, thank you. Uh, and uh, Mr. Ashraf? Hi, uh, I'm Ashraf. I'm also from Malaysia, and also I graduated from Monash University for my bachelor degree and master's degree in IMU. That's all. Thank you. All right. Okay, uh, Dr. Lewis. Hi. Uh, so uh, I'm from the life science department. Okay. So uh, I of course I'm from Malaysia. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not sure I answer this question or not. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Malaysia and I'm in life science and my expertise is in the uh, microbiology. That means mostly focus on the uh, bacteria in figure out some of the nature compound or some some uh mutation of certain uh bacteria that resistant to cer certain antibiotic that we use yeah and we all, i also have started the uh, video uh, for for certain infection in malaysia as well yeah thank you okay all right so next question, uh, I'm not sure if we have successfully answered um, your question. Uh, if you find that you are not, uh, uh, we didn't fully answer your questions, please type in the uh, Q&A uh, panel again. Okay, maybe you can write in more details of what you exactly uh, want to ask and then we will, we will try to address it again. All right, so uh, next question, uh, is there any scholarship offer? I think uh, Dr. Lewis will be more in the position to answer this question. Okay, hey, thank you. Uh, for this MMM program, mixed mod, we actually don't have any scholarship. Yeah, so solely about that. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question uh, is any research grant is available? Yes. For this MMM uh, so solely a project, I did not highlight the research uh, fund for this MMM mixed mod because you see uh, the, the research project, as I mentioned earlier, this master is not mastered by research and the, the research duration is only five months. 
and part-time as long as it's 10 months only. So the leases funding is according to the objective of the leases already on, that can be answered within that budget we provided is uh, Linkit Malaysia, 10,000, uh, uh, 10K, that means, yeah. So that is a leases fund that we will provide to each student, yeah, 10K to complete the leases project within five months for full-time. Part-time is only 10 months. Mm. Thank you. All right, so I hope that answer your question. Um, do I get to choose our research topic? If I do it part-time, how often do I need to go to the campus? I think, again, these questions may be more suitable for Dr. Louis. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, uh, because, uh, because this project uh, for MMM post postgraduate program, we will have the a list of the research project and uh, let the student to to choose based on their interest. Yeah, based on the interest. And in certain scenario, some some MMM postgrad, but very uh, rare, some MMM postgrad actually have their own idea, their interest want to come out of the research project in certain field. So for example, he or she discussed with me, she would like to have the research project is related to the pancreatic cancer. And then she have some idea what she or he want to figure out. Then I will try to dialect this uh, MM postgrad to looking for certain uh, researcher in IMU who are frequently working in this area for further discussion. Yeah. Yes, you have freedom. You, you have freedom to choose which project uh, you are more interested. You would like to train your skill in the area. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, this particular question, um, maybe the, the participant will also, to, uh, will also like to uh, learn about this from the perspective of the alumni. Uh, maybe Ms. Divya and Mr. Ashraf can tell us a little bit of your process of how you choose your research topic and uh, how often do you need to go to the campus and use the instrument, those kind of things. Okay, um, I'll, I'll start first. Um, so in terms of choosing my research topic, um, I think we are given the option to come up with our own research topic if we do have. However, um, I did find it more approachable when I did go up to different supervisors and ask whether they have research that um, they're already working on and require, you know, postgrad students to work on it and whatnot. And after, you know, um, hearing out from a few of my supervisors and whatnot, I decided to go with the topic that was um, most suitable for me with Dr. Dinesh working on nanoparticles. So um, I think you do have the option of um, finding supervisors that already have expertise and um, opting to go something along those lines um, or coming up with your own research. But of course, if you do come up with your own topic, it is um, you do need to have a supervisor that would be able to support you as well. So um, that's something that you need to keep in mind if you already have something that you kind of want to work on. Uh, yeah. In terms of uh, coming to the lab, I think it's very subjective to the research that you're doing. Uh, certain research requires more hours in the lab and others don't require as much. Uh, it really all comes down to the methodology of your research. So it really, it really, really depends on um, what, what you're working on. Because if you're doing something that's more on computational drug development, um, you might need more time on the computer and not so much in the lab. So, um, but if you're doing something really hands-on in the lab, like working like for what I did, nanoparticles and all that, um, you may need to spend quite a number of hours in the lab. And sometimes it may even be a longer duration because certain, um, certain experiments may last like 12 hours, you know, or it, it may be in intervals. You need to take the observation at, you know, different uh, different timings, like three hours, six hours, nine hours, 12 hours. So it really depends on the methodology. Yeah. All right. Thank you. How about uh, Mr. Ashraf? Hi. Uh, for me, I developed my own, I mean, I came up with my own research project uh, uh, at the time. And this is because I have a few limitations. Some of it is because I cannot go to IMU as frequent as I need to when when doing the project. So that is why I, 
like I mentioned earlier, I did my project at my workplace. So in my case, I have two supervisors. Uh, one, the first supervisor is uh, the one is from IMU, IMU, the Prof. Azizi Ayub. And this, my second supervisor is, um, uh, is a pathologist, is a microbiologist uh, at my workplace. So she'll be, she'll be the one who's advising me on uh, what need or what is my topic of research that I should pursue. And then uh, Prof Azizi will be the one who advised me more on uh, the, the methodology part. Yeah, that is all for me. All right, thank you for the sharing. So in short, I think uh, the students uh, are actually able to come up uh, with their own idea, if they have an idea, they have a passion in certain uh, area that they would like to uh, to work on, they can develop the proposal together with the supervisor. Uh, however, if they do not have an uh, idea or they find that the idea of the supervisors is interesting and they want to work on it, uh, they can also do so. All right, so the next question, uh, again, I think these questions will be more suitable to be answered by Ms. Divya and uh, Mr. Ashraf. So uh, how different and more intensive is this master course and the research project compared to the undergraduate version of lectures and also uh, the undergraduate final year project? So may maybe start from Ms. Divya again. Yeah, um, so I would say that it is a bit more intensive, especially because uh, I feel in undergraduate, it's a little bit more spoon fed um, in terms of like everything's very organized uh, during your undergraduate research and whatnot. And uh, here it's a bit of a bit more of like trial and error for what I went, like for the experience that I had. So a lot of the times you have your supervisors there if you need them to advise you or something, but it's, it's a study that is starting from absolute scratch most of the time. And for me, per se, there was a lot of, a lot more trial and error that was required when I was doing uh, the master's. But it, it was more of like a learning curve. Whereas I feel like undergraduate sometimes is a bit more like spoon-fed in the sense that everything's already structured. And um, so it, it does not like run off too much in comparison from my experience. <laughs> Right, so uh, actually I agree with with TV actually. The for undergraduate is it's pretty much straightforward and yeah, spoon fed and everything is there. We just we just follow the flow. But for master's degree, the research part is uh is really we we are the one who developed the project, so we 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 are the one who should be doing. From A to Z, so it's uh it's more complex, and especially uh if you develop your own project, then you have to really look into it and structure the project. All right. Um. So for the next question, I think uh the question is more or less the same as the previous question. Uh, the participant would like to know, uh, when do they choose their supervisor? how the research topic is formulated and uh, is the research topic prepared beforehand or it will be discussed uh, together with the candidate. So for this question, maybe uh, I will invite Dr. Lewis to answer. Uh, I think, thank you, uh, Dr. Ketley. So for the research project selection, right? Just now the question, am I right, Ketley? Uh, when do the student need to choose their supervisor? Maybe we answer that question first. Okay, when do the uh the the MM postgrad need to identify the the supervisor? Just now I have shared the the timeline the the workflow. Even though it's part time or full time, during they join this program during first semester, within that few months they need to uh identify their research interest and then go through to that particular uh, supervisor and further discuss about their research project. So that means in during first semester, yeah. Okay, so in terms of the research topic, is it that the supervisor prepared the topic beforehand and allow the student to choose or the student will need to uh, discuss with the supervisor and come up with the plan together? Okay, thank you for this question. Um, both way, yeah, both also would have, yeah. 
So we will have the simple research uh, synopsis, the research proposal synopsis, and then let the student go through the basic uh, information about the research proposal. Then they can further discuss with the uh, potential men supervisor. At the same time, as I mentioned just now, you also can have your own idea about the research direction and further discuss with that uh, uh, appropriate uh, researcher for, for as a men supervisor. Yeah. Hopefully, I answer that question. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the next question is still to Dr. Lewis. So, uh, is there any career impact for or influence for the applicants, uh, from choosing full time and the part time option? Uh, I think in short, whether the full time or part time will have any impact or not, in terms of their uh, uh journey. Uh. But for career impact, don't have, but I, I, I can share with you for full time. I saw from the database, from the database, some depend on, on your, on your M, some, some, some postgrad join this MN program as a full time is because they, they have the, the planning is they, after MM master program, they would like to use this master degree to join the PhD so they can look like it's a fast track for them to join the PhD by research in, in, in IMU or in other country. We have the MMM alumni who finish this, uh, this MMM program and then apply for PhD in Germany and also get the uh, position there. Yeah. And also we have another MMM postgrad alumni finish this MMM program and then apply for PhD in Monash University as well. So uh, if, if full-time, that means within one year or two years, you can already get your cert and then, and then apply for PhD. If part-time, that means maybe you will be, uh, will be need two years to three years to complete it and then to get the PhD. But, but for the job scope, uh, for impact on, on the, not for PhD study, I, I don't think got any uh, impact, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, so I think due to time constraint, actually we still have a lot of uh, question to answer, but unfortunately, we I think we can only choose one more question, okay, uh, to be answered. Uh, I think there is one question over here. Can you elaborate more on the QMU double degree? I think this question should be answered by Dr. Lewis as well. Mm, okay. So for, for, for the QMU double award, uh, the program is we need to uh, study the MMM program at the same time also study the program in the, for the London. So the, the program from the London is the, as the ODL mod actually, yeah, ODL mod. So that means you, you learn through online, okay. For, for their program, for their program, actually, uh, they have their core module and also the compulsory module for them as well. Okay. So for my system here, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have eight core module, that means compulsory and core module, and with two selective elective module. And then for the research project, actually, it's the joint research project. If we choose the double award program, that means the research project do together between the main supervisor in, in IMU and also the supervisor in London. So depend on the need of the research project. If the research project needs some part, need to be carried out in their own institute, then this MMM double award uh, postgrad need to travel there to complete some part of the research at their institute. Okay. And for their, uh, but, but one thing I need to highlight here, just now I mentioned that in the, in, in my briefing for MM program, we don't have the examination, mostly based on the coursework, right? Okay. For this double, uh, award, one, the, the, the program from the QMU, that means from the London, they will have the, uh, examination for their, the module that they offer. Yeah. And, if you would like to register for double award, we also need one of the requirement is uh you need to take the exam, the English exam 
the the IELTS exam. Okay, so you need to get the updated score with uh with minimum of six point zero in written component. Okay, so the band score is six point five. Yeah, this have been highlighted in the brochure in in our MMM program together with the Tupper Award. All right. Um, okay, so thank you. Uh, I think uh, uh, due to time constraints, we still have uh, uh, a number of questions that we cannot address. So we are truly, truly sorry for that. Uh, a few things that I would like to add over here. Just now, uh, we have talked about the double degree. So the, the double, double degree is known as QMU double degree. The QMU actually stands for Queen Mary uh, University of London. All right, so that is the short form of um, that university name. So uh, if you search uh, internet for a bit, then you will know that this is really a, pr a prestigious um, institute, all right, uh, from uh, UK. So, uh, and as, as I said, there are a lot of questions that are unanswered, but uh, we would like to answer them. Unfortunately, not on this webinar due to time constraint. Um, if uh, if you could, please uh, contact us through uh, uh, the link start at imu.edu.my. Okay, start S T A R T at imu.edu.my. Uh, after you contact us over there, then we will be able to uh, contact you and answer all your questions in a one to one manner. You can choose whether you want to talk to us uh, through phone, through WhatsApp. Okay. Uh, chat only, you do not want to talk, okay? All those things we can arrange, all right? So um, no problem with that. So uh, I think um, in that case, we will end the sessions over here. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you to all the speakers. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kelly. Thank you for the participants so solely. Some questions I'm able to answer and thank you for our two alumni. Uh, for your time here, As Asraf and Divya. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night to all of you. Please, uh, if you have very, uh, really, if you want me to answer, I can answer you, not now. You just uh, drop the message in the link as mentioned by Dr. Gately. Yeah, uh, I definitely true, yeah. can contact you. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye.